now is we'll take a look at uh, some of these templates and scripts, how they look, um, and get a feel for what was done and how a lot of this was was stitched together. So first, we'll just take a look at the CloudFormation template, which is here. So there are, there are a number of different uh, layers to this template. Um, we won't dive into deep of them all, but you know, here you can see how the parameters are formed. So this is, again, this was uh, CloudFormation supports JSON or YAML. This is written in YAML. Um, and a lot of this will look familiar to what we just saw on the, the prompt screen. Uh, these are the parameters that we've uh, defined. You here, we, we've set defaults. You can set defaults or not. Uh, some of this can be hard-coded um, if you want users to you know, be forced to use a particular parameter, uh, for example. Um, but here under resources, this is where we're actually getting into the, the resource provisioning. Uh, this is where we're calling, um, you know, if we, you know, we do that. So, you know, for, um, you know, let's look at the in instance. I think it's what everyone will, will be most familiar with. So Cognos instance. So that's the, the object that we're creating. A type is an EC2 instance. And then we're defining just those properties about the instance. So what security group to use? In this case, you know, where it's the one we just made above. Um, that has all the, you, know, you can see here, you know, has uh, inbound important 9300, for example. You're attaching the IAM profile, attaching everything we've already defined above uh, to this instance that uh, that's needed for it. But if we hit here, this is that user data we said. So this is that script that will execute when the instance starts. Um, and this is the, the key component, because now this is when we take over to actually configuring Cognos. Um, you see here, it's not a big script, because we've little uh, cloak and dagger here. We're actually just calling another script. <laughs> um, and the reason for that is, uh, if you look here on this left, you see we have to number the different rows and we have to wrap everything in brackets and drop in a um, vertical line with pre uh, percent sign. So when you run it through PowerShell um, in CloudFormation, this is the, the syntax that you have to do to get to execute. You have to wrap every row of PowerShell in, in the syntax. And some of the scripts that we have can be close to 200 lines. So, you know, be honest, I, I don't want to have to go through 200 lines and wrap that uh, in all these brackets and all this code. Um, so what we ended up just referencing it and downloading, the, downloading that script um, here and then executing the script. And, it actually proved to be much better, aside from me not wanting to go through the, the exercise of doing that. Um, what I'm able to do is I can update this configuration script whenever I need to, and then just dump that back out to S3. And then when I rerun it, that new script just gets picked up. I'm not having to come in here to my template every time and edit what lines, make sure the lines get set, make sure I'm not missing a bracket. Um, it's almost as cleaner and easier to, to maintain an update. I'm just dropping that out on the S3 repository and having it get picked up in that man, uh, method. Um, uh, just closing out, here is where, then just below the user data, this is where we're doing the tagging. So, you know, again, you know, we mentioned the importance of tagging. You know, this is what allows it to be hard-coded, um, where you know, users aren't forgetting it. It just gets tagged. You know, they just have to make sure they, they added the, the right inputs, or you can hard-code the inputs. You know, actually, that's what I did here. So this is our schedule to stop instances every day that aren't needed to, to, to run at night. So I don't want to forget that for, for these, especially since these are just sandbox instances. So I have that schedule automatically get applied. So it, it'll always get shut down even if I, I forget to turn it off. Um, so there's that. Now, just really quick, want to jump through the, um, the cog config install script that we were referencing. So. This is the PowerShell script that is actually doing the, the install of Cognos right now on that new sandbox that we had. And you see here, a lot of this will um, be familiar. You know, we're defining where we want to, um, where we're downloading from S3, where we were dropping our drivers. Um, you know, we're, we parameterize that and, and dropping that out here. Um, here is the parameters for report, uh, the report, uh, report mode, the dispatcher size. Um, all this is parameterized. And so this is something that you could parameterize, you could hard code. Um, it just depends on, on what your workflow is. You can see here for the audit database, we have our audit information. 
Yeah, see, what I love about this, I mean, just the amount of time I have spent looking at, you know, I've got, I've got three um, uh, remote desktops open, and I've got Cognos configuration open in all three of them, you know, and I'm just <laughs> like, okay, what is different here? Because one of these is wrong, but I don't know which one, you know, um, or comparing them in Notepad++ or something like that. So, I mean, what, if I could boil it down, at least my understanding of it here is like, like basically you're you're all those all of the configuration steps you actually take when you install Cognos in Cog Config are all being generated by this file. And so, you know, mm -hmm. I could reuse this file if I have a hundred application servers to install, just this one file or PowerShell script is gonna be able to configure all one hundred of them for me. Is that accurate? Uh yes, potentially. There are always caveats, but yeah. Uh that that would be the idea. Yeah, yes. See that that's I love it. <laughs> okay, keep going. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's okay. Um, you know, we're running up now, so I'm gonna just jump through. So, you know, these are all being parameterized, and all we're doing here to actually configure Cognos is we have parameterized a Cog startup file. So, all of the key areas you about the, the blah blah the, the DMP size report report mode the um, uh, dispatcher URL, so the machine name, or the host name for that, uh, gateway information. We've created parameters for all those and the correct, um, correct block of, of code within that cog startup file. Uh, and then here, we're just doing a big find and replace. <laughs> and so, um, I mean, I say that's it. There, obviously, there, there was quite a few steps to get to this, but that's essentially what we're doing. So we're, we're, we're updating that cog startup file. And then once it's been updated, um, you can see here we're we're saving the configuration and then we're starting the service. Yep. One little thing in this sure. that I, I love is how you turn on off and then turn back on Windows Defender mm -hmm. <laughs> through this yep. script. I mean it's it's a little thing like that that could really trip you up. Um if you know, like if I were coming in here, I don't know how long it would take me to think, oh yeah, I need to put that in my PowerShell script. But um and it's, it's the little touches. Here, and also uh, configuring firewall rules. So I've, I've mentioned, I think at the top, like I've forgotten to open these many times, <laughs> it becomes a headache, but now you can just do it, just define it to do it once and, and it'll always be there, uh, opened up for you.